In this video, I'm going to show you what is divergence test for series and how we can use this test to prove that a series is divergent. Consider a general series in the form of sigma n from 1 to infinity of a sub n. If we take limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity and this limit does not exist or this limit does not equal zero then we can say that the given series diverges but note that if the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity does equal zero we cannot say anything about convergence or divergence of the series maybe the given series converges or maybe diverges We cannot say anything about convergence or divergence of the series. So as you can see, this test is useful to prove that a series is divergent. With this test, we cannot prove the convergence of the series. So if we use this test and the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity does equal zero, we have to use other tests to check if the series converges or diverges. Now let's do some example. Consider this series, sigma n from one to infinity of two n squared over five n squared plus four. If we want to use the divergence test to check if this series is convergent or divergent, we have to find this limit. I will show you two methods for finding this limit. I will show you two different methods for finding this limit. The first method is to keep only the dominant terms in the numerator and denominator. In the numerator of this limit, only we have one term which is 2n squared but in the denominator we have 5n squared and 4 between these two terms 5n squared is the dominant term so we keep that term and we ignore the other term note that because n approaches infinity 4 compared to 5n squared is negligible because 4 is a constant but as n goes to infinity 5 times n to the 2 because n is infinity is infinity and 4 compared to 5n squared which is actually infinity is nothing so we can ignore it so the dominant term in the bottom is 5n squared the dominant term is always the term with higher degree. So we keep the highest degree in top and highest degree in bottom. Now, if we simplify n squared from the top with n squared from the bottom, the limit equals 2 over 5. Now, because this limit does not equal 0, immediately, based on divergence test, we can say that the series, the given series, is divergent. Let me show you another method for finding this limit. We know that for finding limits like this, we have to divide top and the bottom of the fraction by highest degree of denominator. In the denominator, the highest degree is n squared. So we divide top and the bottom of this fraction by 
n squared. So in numerator we have two n squared over n squared, and in the bottom we have five n squared over n squared plus four over n squared. Now because n approaches infinity, four over n squared approaches zero. 4 over n, which n goes to infinity, 4 over n squared actually, is 4 over infinity and 4 over infinity approaches 0. 5n squared over n squared is 5 and 2n squared over n squared is 2. So this equals 2 over 5 plus 0, which is 2 over 5. This is two different methods that you can find this limit. Of course, the first method is easier. So the given series is divergent because the limit of the sequence does not equal zero. Sigma n from one to infinity of cosine of n. If you want to use divergence test to check if this series is convergent or divergent, first we have to find limit of cosine of n as n goes to infinity. Because n goes to infinity, cosine of n, which means cosine of infinity, we know that cosine of infinity does not exist. So this limit does not exist. If you wonder why this limit does not exist, remember the graph of cosine of n. The reason that this limit does not exist is that at infinity, cosine bounces up and down between negative 1 and 1. So this limit is between negative 1 and 1. But it doesn't approach any specific number and so this limit does not exist because this limit does not exist based on divergence test we can conclude that this sigma this given series is divergent now look at these series sigma n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n and sigma n from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the power of n. If we want to use the divergence test for these two series, first we have to find limit of the sequences, limit of 1 over n and limit of 1 over 2 to the n as n approaches infinity. Limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity does equal 0 because any number over infinity approaches 0. Also, the second limit does equal 0 because we have a number in numerator and the denominator approaches infinity and any number over infinity approaches 0. Because the limits does equal 0, we cannot conclude anything about these two series with the divergence test. If you remember, divergence test works only when the limit does not equal zero or the limit does not exist. And then we can say the series is divergent. But here the limits are equal zero. And so we cannot conclude anything about these two series with the divergence test. But probably you are familiar with this series. This series is harmonic series and harmonic series is a divergent series. With the integral test, we can prove that the harmonic series is divergent. But the second series is a geometric series. If you look at the form of this expression, we can find out that this given series is a geometric series. And the ratio of this geometric series 
is 1 over 2. And we know that in geometric series, if the absolute of the ratio will be less than 1, which it is in this case, because ratio is 1 half and 1 half is less than 1, then the geometric series is convergent. So the first series is divergent, second series is convergent. And note that in both of them, limit of the sequence is zero, but the first series is divergent, second series is convergent. As you can see, the divergence test doesn't work for cases that the limit of sequence does equal zero. If the limit does equal zero, we need other tests or other methods for finding the convergence or divergence of the series. Now look at this example. Sigma n from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n. If we want to use the divergence test, we have to find a limit of negative 1 to the power of n as n approaches infinity. This limit does not exist. And so, based on divergence test, the given series diverges. If you wonder why this limit does not exist, note that when n approaches infinity, n can be odd or even. If n will be even, negative 1 to the even power is 1. But when n is odd, negative 1 to the odd powers equals negative 1. And as you can see, when n approaches infinity, because we don't know what is n, n becomes larger and larger, and it can be odd or even, the sequence doesn't approach any specific number, and so the limit does not exist. And because the limit does not exist, the given series diverges based on divergence test. Another example, sigma n from 2 to infinity of ln of n. If we want to use divergence test, we have to find limit of ln of n as n approaches infinity. When n goes to infinity, ln of n becomes larger and larger without bound and limit equals infinity. If you look at the graph of the function ln of x, you can see this. This is the graph of ln of x. And as you can see, when we go far to the right, the graph, the y values of the function of ln of x, becomes larger and larger. This distance increases without bound. And so limit of ln of n as n approaches infinity is infinity. ln of infinity equals infinity. And so because the limit does not exist, we can say that the given series diverges based on divergence test.